Hi, everybody. I'm just so happy today because my guest is David Zippo, and he is one of the most prolific writers uh, for the theater, for television, for films. He's, uh, his lyrics have won him the Tony Award, uh, two Academy Award nominations, two Grammy nominations, and three Golden Globe nominations. He's one of the few contemporary lyricists to have achieved success on Broadway, in Hollywood, and in the world of pop music. You're going to enjoy meeting David in just a few seconds. Well, you know what's amazing to me? Your first show that you did on Broadway, where you wrote the lyrics, you won a Tony. I mean, right off the bat with City of Angels. I did. Yeah. Well, were you surprised, I mean, to be, that it was so awarded? Did you? Well, it, it, was a, it was a dream team. I was very lucky. I was the unknown element of a team that involved yeah. Larry Gelbart, who won um, countless awards for writing MASH and Tootsie, and uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. He was one of my heroes. And uh, Cy Coleman, yeah. uh, my dear friend and hero and mentor, and he, he wrote Sweet Charity. and. I love my wife and Barnum and uh, um, countless hit shows. Um, so I, being a part of that team, uh, I, I thought we had a pretty good chance. How did you become a part of that team as well, an unknown yeah, the, at I, that time? I was a very lucky guy. Uh, yeah. I had gone to law school because I figured the idea of being a lyric writer for a, for a living was a long shot. Uh, and so uh, I went to law school and while I was at law school I met uh, one of my classmates was a, a, a young man uh, who's now a lawyer named Russell De Silva and his dad was uh, or was a, a very so? prominent uh, no uh, uh, Al De Silva he was a very prominent theater attorney and he represented Cy Coleman and Larry Gelbart and um, Russell thought I was talented and, and sent me to his dad and his dad agreed and agreed to represent me, but it took years for Cy to get around to calling me. Uh, <laughs> um, people, uh, we had mutual friends, and they had yeah. seen my work in other areas, and they were very excited about it. But I, I think it was like three or four years before he finally yeah. called me. We well, you know, got a kick going way back, and we're going to leave that very soon because you're going to, your music is going to be your songs are going to be sung at a very special event coming up, and we do want to talk about it, but. Uh, looking back, about way back, you wrote songs, you wrote special lyrics in high school. That was, I mean, it's funny. <laughs> well, I think to be a lyric writer, you. So you always knew you, even though you were It was something long. that interested me very yeah. early. And, uh, but you kind of have to teach yourself. There's no lyric writing institute or university. So, uh, and what interested me, um, I had seen a lot of shows. My parents took me to, to theater, sometimes in New York, sometimes just regional theater, yeah. and I loved it. And so I kind of taught myself how to write. Uh, but I, uh, to amuse my friends, I took songs off the radio and wrote parody lyrics about my teachers, uh, things I that I probably it. couldn't show them. But. <laughs> I always remember parties, and Sammy Kahn would do that at parties, not as teachers, his right. buddies. <laughs> right. But uh, again, I, I, we, I wasn't going to go to the past when there's so much that you've done more recently, but you started with Barbara Cook, and there is no better impersonator of lyrics and songs than Barbara Cook. Barbara was out here very recently at the McCallum. Uh, right. She is there's no no one who sings better than Barbara Cook yeah. and I met while I was in law school long before uh, I had an attorney or anything uh, I met Barbara and Wally Harper her musical director when they were performing in Boston and I told Wally how much I liked his music and, and Barbara's singing and and he said well you know my lyricist and I just and, and I, I admired his songs with his lyric writing partner, and he said, well, we just stopped writing together. <laughs> and I thought that was the bell of opportunity ringing, so I just said, well, I'm a law student, but what I really want to do is write lyrics. And he said, well, you know, send me your lyrics. It's hard to find a good one. And he liked them, and the next thing I knew, we were uh, writing together That's when fantastic. I came to New York. But then you went on and you did, uh, we talked about City of Angels, but you did uh, The Goodbye Girl, I did. And that was Neil Simon. Neil was. Simon and Marvin Hamlish wrote the music. Yeah, right. And and you were nominated again with that. Uh, right? We were nominated for best musical yeah. and a few things. Yeah, yeah. I got uh, I won an award for my lyrics for yeah. not a Tony but a I think it was the drama drama desk, award, desk yeah. or one of those. Yeah, but but you were constantly. And then you did one show with Andrew Lloyd Webber. I did. I did. And that won a bunch of Olivier awards, which of course is Britain's big. Deal, right? Yeah, it, w it ran a couple of years in London. It was called The Woman in White. Yeah. 
it ran a little on Broadway. Well, you got a, a Tony nomination I though did, for that. I did, but it didn't. It only ran uh, several months. And yeah, we yeah. were disappointed. Yeah. But. Well, all right. Now, you did motion pictures. Uh, you did animated motion pictures, right. and were nominated for Oscars for those. I, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I, so obviously you knew what you were doing. You went into the right profession. And maybe you wouldn't have been a good lawyer. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm glad I don't have to find out. Well, I must say that one of the most charming things we have down here at the Palm Springs Art Museum, and our dear friend Michael Childers, who is producing One Night Only, where many of your songs will be sung, um, had a speaker series that he helped get the speakers for. And he convinced you as a friend to come over and speak. And it was so charming. And you Thank got you. your friends, like Michelle Lee, and a few others, to perform. And we have a little clip. Now, this was not done professionally. My daughter, Anne, took it with her little Sony camera. And this is a little of Michelle Lee singing from uh, but you have to have a dream. What's it started with a dream, which yeah. is from a show that uh, I worked on with Cy Coleman and Wendy Wasserstein, based on uh, Wendy's kids' book, uh, Pamela's First Musical. Okay, so Lorraine, can we cue that up? Before a song can stop the show and cause a thunderous ovation. Lovely uh, event. I, I mean, people here are so lucky to have people like you oh, that yeah. participate in various things, and um, that was just a special, magical afternoon. Thank you. And one night only is always a special, magical evening. Have you talked to Michael about the show at all? I did. This year, it has an interesting theme. It's called Legends of the Desert, and I think he's stretching the definition of legend a little bit to include me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had some pretty big hits, you know. Uh, you can always count on me. That was a how many? How many records did that sell? It sold a few. I, a few million. Uh, thousand? <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but it was it, it, awfully big. And I, I have to confess, and he promises he's going to have it in his program. I don't know, but I gave him some of those names. Of oh, the, great! The, the composers. I mean, like, who knew that Rudolf Frimmel lived here? He did. Right. <laughs> but anyway, his show is to me the best show presented every year. Well, the level of talent yeah. is it's so impressive, and and this year I think Michelle Lee, who we just watched, is right. going to be on, and. Uh, I think Connie Stevens and a lot of younger Broadway talent, uh, uh, really great singers. And it's always, it's just boom, 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 one great moment yeah, after another. Yeah. And he knows just how to pace it. He Obviously, does. as a good director, I used to think he directed it, but I guess, but I'm still sure, knowing Michael, who is a great photographer and has produced some other wonderful things, that he's standing there saying, that's enough, go. Well, he has a, a great attention for detail, mm -hmm. and he's an artist, so he really understands how we in the audience uh, enjoy a show and, and to, how to make it as pleasurable and as, as exciting as possible. And of course, that show, and it really is, it's one night only, and it's a once in a lifetime experience. If there are people here who haven't seen it, uh, it is, as I recall, it's April 29th. Uh, I think it's a Thursday. I think it's the 28th, I think. Oh. Oh, it's okay. th whatever that Thursday is. Okay, and, and it's at the McCallum Theater, and I presume they can get tickets from the McCallum Theater. They can, they call the McCallum box office. Yes. And I think they're almost sold out. <laughs> and it's 340 Arts is the box office, but also it is a benefit 
so therefore the tickets become deductible. And the benefit is the Jewish Family Services, which takes care of a lot of people, I understand, here in the Valley, and they don't have to be Jewish to right. apply for help. So anyway, now you have a lot of other things in your future. What about, I'm gonna add, before we talk about the future, um, writing for the theater, directing, writing for films, and television. Different, very different approach? Not as different as you would think. Certainly, okay. like animated movies, writing for animated yeah. films is almost the same as writing for, for theater because... Why? Yeah. Well, because uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a traditional film, mm -hmm. the songwriters usually come in at the end and the composer comes in at the end. But with an animated movie, you start with an outline and you start with the, uh, the, the writers of the script and everyone works together to figure out which moments to musicalize and then you write the songs to, to advance the story. So it's very much like writing a Broadway show. Yeah. Well, now one of the ones that you did the lyrics for was Hercules. Right. And there was a big song in that. Is a that song called Go the Distance. Right, and someone, who recorded it? Uh, well, a few people. Michael Bolton recorded it and yeah. he had a hit with it. And uh, Ricky Martin recorded it in Spanish and had a hit all over Latin America with that, which was exciting. Do you ever hear your songs and think, oops, I wouldn't have recorded it that way? Oh, now and then, <laughs> now and then. But I, I've been lucky. I, we've had some really talented singers. So like when Christina Aguilera does your song, she'll have a really valid and interesting take on it. Yeah. Well, we're going to return to you in just a few seconds. Great. But first, these messages. The Best is Yet to Come with uh, David Zippel because you have a show called The Best is Yet to Come. I do. And it's coming to Broadway. Well, it's an off-Broadway off theater Broadway, it's called I... 59 East 59th. Well, but pretty it's... close. They can just walk around. It's them. very close. Well, some very great shows have started off-Broadway. Indeed. Yeah, and you, there, you said there are going to be um, the, you know, rehe not rehearsals, but the before it actually opens. Oh, People previews. Previews, well, yeah. We start performances May 18th. So if you're in New York, go. Go ahead. Please. And it's, it's a review that um, I had done with the Rubicon Theater in Ventura, California. We tried it out there, uh, and it was very successful at the Rubicon. And so we're doing it for seven weeks in New York with the hope that um, we'll get a, a begin a national tour and, and a, perhaps a Broadway transfer as that well. That would be wonderful. Now you are directing this. I am, and I, and I cr created it. I put the songs together. Mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. When did you decide you wanted to direct as well as be a lyricist? Well, I've been interested in directing uh, from the very beginning, but I, I guess my career as a lyricist took off and I just left the directing in the, in the, in the, in the background. And then mm -hmm. uh, after a while, I thought, well, you know, I really do want to do this, and so I carved out some time and, and have been putting projects together with the intention of directing them as well as, as, as writing them. And I'm, and I'm directing other people's work as well. Yeah, and you, which do you enjoy more? I, they're very different. I, I, I love them both. It's nice to be able to do both. It's, it's kind of a, a refreshing change to go back and forth. Yeah, okay. Now, you have other things perking from what I understand. Um, the, the Moss Hart, George Kaufman. Well, that's been perking for a long time. The first show I wrote was an adaptation of uh, a great Kaufman and Hart comedy called Once in a Lifetime. And th it, it never got produced. And the... Um, Who did you write that with? I wrote it with a, a terrific composer named Jonathan Sheffer. And uh -huh. uh, I co-wrote the book with a, a really fine director named Joe Leonardo. In fact, Joe lives in Palm Desert now. Oh, isn't that amazing? And Everybody comes here. It's true. And uh, <laughs> hopefully it will happen in the next year or so. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're working on making it happen. Of course, you know, everybody always wonders when um, composers work together, the lyricist and the composer, you know, what comes first, the words or the music. So in your experience, how do you do it? Well, I've written with a lot of different composers and it changes with every collaboration. Uh, I, I like to think of myself as very adaptable. Uh, sometimes, well with Cy Coleman, for example, we did write in all directions, backwards and forwards. Sometimes the music would come first, sometimes I would hand him a rather significant part of the lyric uh -huh. or the whole thing. And in other cases we would sit in the room and just bat ideas and he would play and, and I would uh, write down ideas until we found a shape or a form and then I'd go home and, and fill in the blanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, do you have a lyric, a particular lyric that you love most? Well, 
uh, you know, it's it's sort of uh, like choosing among your children. Uh, I, I'm proud of a lot of the, of the songs I've written, but um, if I had to pick one, uh, it would certainly it it it, 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 it I. It might be uh, You're Nothing Without Me, which I gather is going to be the, the finale of uh, uh, One Night Only this year. Oh, terrific. That's marvelous. And all those stars will be on the stage together singing it if it's the finale. Well, actually, that's what Michael does. This, in this particular case, it's two singers. It's, it's a song from City of Angels. Uh -huh. and it's the end of the first act of the show. And it's when uh, it's a, it, that's a musical about a, f a writer of fiction okay. and a detective. And at this particular moment, the fictional character comes to life and addresses his creator, and so two actors will be singing it. Yeah, okay. But they may do a repeat. A rep they could. They, they very could. Well. Or they probably will sing yeah. One Night Only. At, at oh, that's it. right. That is, you are right. That is always the end. Traditionally. I've got to say, folks, if you can still get tickets to One Night Only, don't miss that opportunity because it is such a great show. And you'll never see so many talented people on, on the same stage in one night. There are going to be a lot of people that everyone will recognize. But they're also and then some newbies, yeah. people that they don't know who are of the same quality of the stars right. that and they know. Right. Great stars perhaps on Broadway but never right. have made it on the big screen. Right. And so the theater people will know but not right. the average person. And that's what makes and it the timing it just goes. It's exciting. Yeah. It really does. Okay, so what made you come to Palm Springs and spend as much time as you do here? Well, initially, uh, I came here to write with Larry Gelbart and Cy Coleman. That's said that. That's Larry right. yeah. lived out here on the weekends. Right, and, right. Uh, and it was beautiful. Uh, but over the years, uh, I've developed a lot of friendships with people who live here. And uh, m my partner and I just kept coming out more and more. And uh, his family lived in Palm Desert. Oh, really? We had friends in Palm Springs. And yeah. it just seemed like a natural place to want to be. Yeah. Now, with the computer today and people don't have to be together when they write. Right, although it's so nice to be you, in the same room. Ha, but have you written well, that way? I have. Uh, Alan Menken and I wrote a song for uh, for the Captain America movie and we wrote most of it um, by telephone, although we started it. I, he was in LA, I was in LA. We began it there. But. Oh, that's very cute. That's clever. What advice do you give to the person that's watching this who really wants to be a lyricist? They don't know where to begin. Um, I think there are several ways to start. One is to start writing as much as you can. If you can find someone, if you, if you write music, then you're all set. If not, find someone whose music you like and work with them. Because uh, there are lots of people who want to be composers who can't find yeah. the words. Uh, but there's ASCAP and BMI, and they have workshops for writers. They're free in many cases. Uh, and um, you can submit to that. In, in LA, uh, they have the um, ASCAP Disney workshop, where songwriters have a panel of uh, well-known writers critique their work. And even if they don't accept your work itself, uh, you can be an, uh, a visitor and, and sit in the audience and you can learn a lot from that. Also, you'll meet other people who want to do what That's you do. That's very interesting. Have you ever, have you been there and done that for students? Uh, well, I've been students? on their panels. Yes, yeah, that's what I meant. Many times. Uh -huh, I'm sure. Um, do you ever write music? You know, when I started, uh, I couldn't find a good composer and I had an opportunity to write for a show and I wrote the music and the lyrics and I got the job and then I immediately found another composer to help me finish it. I, I, do you prefer just doing the lyrics or would you like someday to do it's both? It's funny, uh, I, I've said this before, but David Zippel, the lyricist, is a snob and he won't write with David Zippel, the composer. Because <laughs> I I I've been fortunate enough to write with great, great composers yes, like you have. Andrew Lloyd Webber and Alan Menken and Cy, of course, so why would I ever want to write with myself when I could write with them? Yeah, good point. <laughs> However, I expect to see you come up with something. Surprise Thank yourself, you. probably. Um, what, aside from the stage, which do you prefer? I think I know my, they're different, my, but my what do you My heart is, is, on, is in the theater. I, that's yeah. what I first was attracted to, and I, and I love Broadway shows. Um, but it, it's been really exciting writing for the movies, too. Yeah. What do you think about now? Because you've done some television as well. I have. And won awards for that, too. Well, I've been nominated for well, some. Well, nominated, <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll win. Mm. <laughs> so do you find that, that uh, they have harder deadlines, faster deadlines? Well, if it, if it would be a weekly show, it would be crazy fast. But I, I think it's exciting. I think television 
um, it's so immediate. And yeah. uh, you know, with theater, you write something and it could be years before it actually gets on the stage. With with TV, you write it and it's out there before you know it. So that's that's an exciting. Thing. What kind of a person is Andrew Lloyd Webber to write with? He was just great. Uh, he he treated me so specially. He he w he was very complimentary and and was enthusiastic about writing with me and so it was a really fun experience mm -hmm. and it was something I never would have thought of writing. It was a, a musical based on a Wilkie Collins novel, a Victorian novel that was 700 pages long that we turned into a stage musical and it was through Compose so I, I most of the shows I have written have, are songs that come out of the spoken book and this was a show where almost all of it was sung so I had never done that and when yeah. he called me and said would you do that I thought well I've never done it and it scared me so I definitely wanted to do it. Where did you meet him? I mean how did that relationship Well I've met Andrew uh, many times over many years and mm -hmm. every now and then he would say let's get together and write a show and I, I said ah, sure <laughs> and uh, he would set up an appointment and say uh, let's meet in two months on a Thursday in New York and then the, a week before it, or the day before it, his secretary, his assistant would call and say, Andrew had a change of heart. He can't be in New York that night. Let's schedule it again. And then I wouldn't hear from him for three years. She probably thought, well, that's never really going to happen. Uh, exactly. And then <laughs> about five years ago, uh, the, the call came, and he actually came into town on the day that we had scheduled. and. He asked me to do the woman in white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is, you know, he's had such tremendous success. Oh my God! Yeah. And you know, a phantom. There's no written. I mean, it's, it's all singing. Right. That's right. sort of what Most he does. Most of his shows. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Absolutely. Sort of a cross between opera and musical theater. Uh huh. Uh huh. Not quite opera, but almost opera. Right. <laughs> what have you something in the back of your head that that is not being planned that someday you'd like to do? Well, I, I'd like to keep directing. Um, I, you know, I have lots of little ideas for musicals that I hope to get to before I can't. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. Um, you're going to be going into New York. You're leaving here in two days or something, right? For the just for rehearsals? Just oh, about or? ten days. No, ju that's for... Has that been cast yet? Uh, the show is cast. There's uh, terrific singers. Um, okay. Howard McGillen, who was the Phantom for more than any other person, mm -hmm. uh, and won a Tony for actually was nominated for a Tony for Anything Goes with Patti Lapone and Edwin Drood. Uh, Lilius White, who debuted her Broadway debut was in a Cy Coleman show called The Life, and she won a Tony for that, and she's in the show. She was, in fact, she was supposed to do One Night Only this year, but uh, she got another job, so she couldn't come. Um, Rachel York, who also made her Broadway debut in City of Angels and has starred in a lot of Broadway shows and is a fantastic singer. Um, uh, Sally Mays, who made her debut in uh, one of Cy's shows and uh, um, has been nominated for two Tonys and is going to be in One Night Only this year. Um, the men are Billy Stritch, who's Liza Minnelli's oh, yeah. musical director and a great friend and a great singer. He's conducting and arranging and will sing from the piano. And he uh, also was going to do one and only, but he's busy yeah. this year. <laughs> um, and I guess, oh, and David Burnham, who, who I think may be in One Night Only also, who's a fantastic singer and who's a Californian. Mm -hmm. Well, you always seem to work with the best. I tried to. I don't blame you. That's terrific. It's always good. I, it was a, there's a famous um, costume designer who passed away recently, a Theone V. Aldrich, and she won many Oscars and Tonys. And she said that her motto was to always be the dumbest person in the room. I love and if that. you can pull that off, it's a good thing. <laughs> I love you, David. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. And I will see you at One Night Only on the 28th of this month on the Thursday at the McCallum Theater. I look forward to it. Okay. And I hope that you will be back with us. Don't forget, if you miss the show, you can tell your friends. They can see it on demand on your local Time Warner On Demand station, uh, wherever you are, here, San Diego. And we look forward to your being with us. And you can see it on demand 24-7. You know, sometimes 3 in the morning you might wake up and say, Oh, I wonder who Gloria Greer has on. And if you're lucky, you'll get David Zippel. Again, thank you. And be with us next time. You can follow me on Twitter when I...